Improving patient medication adherence is an important focus for all stakeholders in the healthcare system today. Pharmacists are doing their part by increasing patient education and counseling on the importance of taking their medication on time and as prescribed. But ultimately, it's the patient who needs to remember when to take their prescriptions. Mead West Vaco is using simpler packaging to help patients follow their medication schedule. The packaging has a proven track record for saving pharmacies time and reducing medication adherence errors. Today, more than one half of all Americans are being treated for at least one chronic disease, such as diabetes or heart disease. And new research shows that the manner in which healthcare professionals prescribe and dispense medication is a critically important component of public health. According to one recent report, between one third and one half of all patients taking prescription medication do not take those medications as directed. It is an obvious, huge public health issue that only half the people uh, take their medications as prescribed. There's multiple reasons for not taking your medicines appropriately. One of the reasons is simple, I forgot. The MWV is currently marketing innovative, but very simple solutions to help address this problem. For example, our shelf pack adherence package is a pre-packaged, pre-label uh, package with calendarized blistering that helps the patient better understand how to take their medication and when. And there's instant verification for the patient to see actually when they've taken the medication and on what day. MWV recently funded a first-of-its-kind retrospective analysis evaluating the impact of adherence packaging on patient medication adherence. This peer-reviewed study was published in the Journal of Clinical Therapeutics and showed that patients using MWV's calendarized blister packaging shell pack alone without any educational support or other complementary adherence intervention benefited from a statistically significant improvement in both refill adherence and persistence versus patients using traditional pill vials. These results were affirmed and amplified by a recent case study evaluating a leading branded cardiovascular medication packaged in the shell pack adherence packaging. New to medication patients receiving shell pack plus, a comprehensive educational campaign showed an extraordinary increase of 44 days in length of therapy, a 41% improvement in persistence compared to vials. Health indicators such as medication adherence can have a huge public health benefit when they are applied to the entire population of millions of patients. In 2011, the American Heart Journal published Duke University's Clinical Research Institute study, Medication Adherence, a Call for Action. About 50% of patients do not take their uh, medication for cardiovascular disease. Cardiovascular diseases are most likely to cause uh, mortality and morbidity within the U.S. population. The prevalence and the numbers of these diseases are continuing to increase. MWV believes that by working and partnering with members of the medical and pharmacy communities, it can continue to develop and provide innovative adherence packaging designed to reduce medication error, address domestic pharmacoeconomic inefficiencies, and improve patient adherence. Beyond adherence, there are many benefits to compliance packs for the patient and for our industry, including reduced cost burden to the U.S. healthcare system, improved refill rates for the pharmacy, improved efficiencies in the filling process, and we will continue to innovate to improve patient medication adherence through our compliance pack program. It is our belief that high value adherence packaging, like Shell Pack, will generate a positive brand association because the package itself is easy to handle as well as easy to open. It will communicate important patient education, because the information that is outlined like side effects and how to take the medication is clearly outlined on the package itself. And then finally deliver improved patient adherence because of the calendarized blister within the package, verifying the patient has taken their medication and when. Training tomorrow's pharmacists to serve society and their patients by improving health outcomes, that is the mission of Duquesne University's Milan School of Pharmacy and the Graduate School of Pharmaceutical Sciences. The Milan School of Pharmacy believes that in order to become a good pharmacist, a student needs to know more than how to properly dispense medications. The School of Pharmacy exists to, um, to help educate future pharmacists. 
and our mission is to improve health outcomes in patients and communities. And our neighbors close to us are, are our community and many of them are in underserved, medically underserved areas. And it is our, our goal to make sure our students understand how to serve those patients as well. Pittsburgh's Hill District is an extremely vibrant neighborhood with economic and healthcare challenges. With the Center for Pharmacy Services, Duquesne University decided the best way to serve this community's health needs was to open the Pharmacy in the Hill. Here, um, most people either went over to Oakland or downtown, which meant they had to catch, um, you know, either anywhere between uh, two to three buses in order to get to the pharmacy. Most of our population consists of the elderly. The population in the Hill is about 96% minority and 40% uh, of the, the area lives below federal poverty guidelines. If the students are here in the pharmacy, as well as the, their external rotation sites, they really get a taste for the community. Um, they're able to really be involved with a diverse population, and hopefully they're able to learn some um, cultural competency in the way that they um, deal with patients of different minorities and ethnic groups, and really learn to meet the patient right at their level. Student pharmacists are well trained and supervised as they learn to treat people as more than patients. Our job here is to make sure that the patients get the best uh, outcomes that they possibly can. Uh, we try to do that with a lot of education. Um, we do a lot of smoking cessation, uh, immunization programs, um, just to try and keep people as healthy as they can be. So they kind of look to us as like the professionals, like we know um, how they can have the best health outcomes possible. Um, for the patients that aren't able to afford their medications, we have a donor that has supplied uh, free medications, generic medications, to be accessed by um, patients that are, you know, zero income level, basically. And then, as far as accessibility goes, we offer free delivery through the community into Allegheny County. We're an ambulatory care clinic. Um, what we do is we manage certain disease states for Duquesne University employees, for the students, and for the surrounding Pittsburgh community. So anybody that can walk in and come and get managed for these disease states or for wellness. We try and show them that it's not about just treating with medications and managing through medication therapy, they will know how to do that when they graduate. They have the background in the therapeutics when they graduate pharmacy school. But more importantly, through the collaboration and through working at the center, they'll know how to care for their patients. We've learned how to communicate effectively with patients, um, kind of form a really trusting relationship. Um, and that way, it's, it's been a good experience for both the uh, student pharmacists and for uh, the patients involved as well. Our underlying mission at Duquesne University is to serve God by serving students. And as we serve students, we ask them to go out in the community and continue to serve there. That's the extension of what their education is all about. Pharmacists are now on the front lines of America's fight against influenza. But did you know there was a time when pharmacists were not allowed to give flu shots? In 1979, only six states allowed pharmacists to dispense influenza vaccines. Today, 52 U.S. states and territories allow it, and more than 150,000 pharmacists have been trained to administer vaccines. It's just one more example of how the role of pharmacists keep changing to adapt to the changing health needs of the nation. The University of the Pacific Thomas J. Long School of Pharmacy and Health Sciences not only turns out healthcare professionals, they educate leaders. Alumni are leaders in every health science field. Students are leaders on campus, and the school is a leader in pharmacy education. The University of the Pacific, Thomas J. Long School of Pharmacy and Health Sciences fosters a culture of leadership. One of the ways this is demonstrated is the high number of Pacific alumni involved in state and national pharmacy associations. Showing the next generation what it takes by deed, as well as taking them under their wings, showing them how to participate in activities within those associations, leads now to a tradition of leadership within our school. One of the biggest things that uh, UOP teaches you about leadership is that uh, to be like an effective leader, you need to be constantly learning because 
you know, pharmacy is a profession that's always changing and you know, we want it to change, which it's a good thing. It's also about developing your skills and helping your profession grow and taking the possibilities of where pharmacy can lead us to and hopefully um, advocate for our profession. All of our faculty get involved with our students and the organizations that they advise. And there are rewards to this. Uh, the mentorship leads to many, many dynamic student leaders that we have developed over the years. The reason that I chose the University of the Pacific was because of all the endless opportunities that I saw while I was here interviewing. Um, when I spoke to some of the professors, they were telling me about all the different organizations, committees. We really take time to know our students. And I think one of the things that's special about us is that we take the time to find the unique uh, qualities in every student. So some people emerge very quickly as leaders. Other people need to be developed. And sometimes a faculty member or you know, another student might see something in you that you didn't see in yourself. So we really do have an opportunity to, I think, you know, ex have, help students express their uniqueness and find places where they can be a leader, where it fits them, not so much them going into a mold, but allowing them to kind of, um, I guess, decide for themselves how they want to lead. At the University of Pacific, we're really lucky because we have a lot of leadership committees and um, one of them is the International Pharmaceutical Leadership Federation and as co-chairs we it's been such a fortunate experience because we started out really small but with the help of faculty and staff we've been really able to expand and initiate a lot of projects for our school and we've really grown in the past year. Pacific also leads by reaching out to the community to provide important health services. Our students and faculty today do healthcare clinics spanning areas such as diabetes, asthma care, osteoporosis care, doing immunizations, helping the elderly select proper um, the Medicare Part D program, their, the proper insurance companies that they might use. Our faculty and students for free have touched thousands of underserved patients here in the San Joaquin County and surrounding counties. You will have colleagues and coworkers looking up to you for advice and more importantly you're going to have uh, patients go to you for advice and asking you to help them solve their their healthcare problems and so I feel like being a student leader really helps you develop those skills. They allow everybody the opportunity to become a leader and if you if you are unsure about it they make you feel so comfortable that um, becoming a leader here on campus is really uh, an enjoyable thing to be a part of. A recent survey by the APHA found that immunizations and diabetes management are the two top services provided by American pharmacists, with more than 60 percent saying they offer them. Medication therapy management, hypertension services, and lipid management were also top offerings. Anticoagulation medication services, pain management, infectious disease services, tobacco cessation, and self-care services rounded out the top ten. University of Buffalo School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences is the only pharmacy school in the State University of New York system, known for excellence, leadership, innovation, and its impact on local, national, and global communities. In addition to being internationally renowned for its research work in pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, and its AIDS training and research programs, this prestigious institution is also expanding into a new state-of-the-art facility. Our mission is one of education, research, and service, certainly. We're very proud, proud of our university and of our students and faculty. Uh, we have a long history. We've just, uh, we're just celebrating our 125th anniversary. Uh, so we've been here a while. And, and beyond that, uh, we've had a historic strength uh, in uh, research. Some of these cutting-edge research and programs take place here at the University of Buffalo School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences. In research, we're mostly involved in developing antibody drugs for treatment of autoimmunity and for cancer, and we work with companies uh, through the Center for Protein Therapeutics to try to engineer new ways to be able to develop proteins more, more quickly. 
In the field of pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of small drug molecules and therapeutic proteins, the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences here at UB is one of the best departments in the nation. The work we do here in the lab allows us to provide a better understanding of the mechanistic determinants of the disposition and drug-drug interactions. One of the exciting moments is to see that what you were expecting is coming with the numbers. And beyond that, our prestige extends beyond uh, the shores of, of this country and so far as we do, in fact, engage uh, in uh, global endeavors. So there's lots of patients who have HIV and not enough clinicians to take care of them and not enough researchers to do the research that needs to be done to figure out what's the best way to treat them. Uh, now at the height of the epidemic in Africa, there's between 30 and 40 million patients. But then we have established programs now with countries in southern Africa where they send some of their faculty and students here and then we're also actively involved in building their capacity at their universities in Africa. The university recently finished building the state-of-the-art Beeling Patient Simulation Center, an interdisciplinary center where medical, dental, nursing, and pharmacy students complete integrated training in virtual clinical care areas. We use high fidelity human simulators to allow students to get a very realistic experience. Um, cases are authored by faculty across different disciplines and it gives the students an opportunity to have a realistic and immersive experience but still in a very safe and controlled environment for learning. I've learned a lot about the profession of pharmacy practice and also about pharmaceutical sciences. I've also learned about my career passions in academia and research. In terms of leadership, I became really involved with the organizations that were available to our chapters in, on the chapter level. So deciding to come to UB was one of the best decisions of my life. Um, I can summarize my experience as being very challenging, but at the same time exciting and rewarding. The faculty and the staff are truly amazing at UB and they do care about the students. The faculty are really inspiring and engaging to develop leadership. They work hand in hand to um, become our advisors. The school also provides a lot of funding to go to conferences, which is really inspiring because you then you get to meet students from all over the nation as well as faculty and mentors. The newly constructed John and Aditha Kapoor Hall is designed and built specifically for the School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences. It was part and parcel of the design concept from the from the from the very beginning that this building should offer a friendly environment for students and faculty. So our future is very bright and we're quite excited as we migrate to Kapoor Hall, which is really truly a state-of-the-art facility. The whole future is, is really, really uh, quite exciting for us. What could be better than a pharmacy technician? After all, they're the ones who keep the system running by handling everything from insurance reimbursement to instructing patients on proper use of medication and devices. But what about a certified pharmacy technician? These are healthcare workers whose skills are certified to be up to date and up to standard by the Pharmacy Technician Certification Board. A board certification can mean not just higher quality work, but also higher pay and better patient outcomes. It's a key way for technicians and the pharmacies they work for to stand out from the crowd. If someone told you that the only pharmacy college in the state of Vermont is the campus of State of New York's Albany College of Pharmacy, you would probably scratch your head a bit in confusion. Well, it is a fact this campus feels a bit different than a typical college. Outstanding sense of community, great outdoors, and scenic downtown mix into somewhat of a different academic experience. My name is Jason and I'm a student at Albany College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. We're here on the rooftop of the Vermont campus. I'm going to walk you through the day in the life of a student here. Hey, Daniel, how's it going? Good. Very good. Nice to see you again. Mind if I sit? We designed this building to be a good educational experience for the way we teach. The vial is a rigid container, unlike the piggyback, which will collapse like a balloon. The nice thing at the Vermont campus is we've got a smaller number of students, smaller number of faculty, so the 
students get to know each other very well and the students get to know the faculty pretty well and yet the students still have the ability to access the other 60 faculty that are at the Albany campus. We're such a small close-knit family. Yeah there's 70 of us in our class, there's 70 in each class here but each class is its own family identity but we have a family identity as a school. Yep, it's on the dyslipidemia and diabetes. Uh, from the first year when uh, we were the first graduating class, uh, what we instilled on each other that help each other out. We all gonna graduate with PharmD. We all gonna be uh, spread out eventually, and there, there is competition later in life. But because of that, you can't let that affect how you should help each other out. And a pharmacist there itself is a helping community. If you don't help your student mates, how are you gonna help the community later? So this spring we're going to go skydiving again. Are you excited to do it with us? I don't know if I'll go skydiving. I will definitely catch everyone. So people can ski, you can snowboard, you can hike. Um, there's also a dance club here and they um, perform in outside communities and they can go to nursing homes and we participate in like salsa nights. The experiential education opportunities for this campus really are obviously off the campus, but we access Fletcher Allen Healthcare, which is about three miles away from here, uh, an excellent uh, level one trauma center, which has superb pharmacy services, so we're able to give our students a great experience there. My students that I have on rotation get to model um, the role of a, a true clinical practitioner. Jane's a 27-year-old female. She was discharged yesterday to her own apartment after a six-day inpatient stay, precipitated by a first episode of diabetic ketoacidosis. The addition of a pharmacist is an invaluable contribution to our to our general plan of care. She came to us on three anti-diabetic medications, which she was non-compliant with. She was taking glipizide. There is no really limit to how much that you can be rewarded from this. This learning experience is invaluable um, to the student of a, of a pharmacy profession. It's invaluable. We've been very fortunate with our students. The student body that we've attracted has been very interested in becoming involved in the community and they've done this in a number of different ways. Getting involved in bigger projects gives you the big picture of why you're in pharmacy school and what a difference you can make. I've had great experiences doing patient care outreach projects. The coolest thing about being in Burlington, Vermont is the youth and the culture. It's all original. There's all one-off restaurants and places to go shop and eat. Every day you can go somewhere new and try something different. That's the coolest thing about Vermont. It's all local and cultural and it's a community feel and that's what we get here at the school too. It really is a family. I'm going to miss it so much when I leave here because I've gained a lot of good friends. When I first came here for my interview there was only one single room finished and everything else was a construction site so I had to take the word that they're actually going to build a school here and I took his word and when I came here the 74 other students we became a family and we made this school what it is. And it was almost like the Field of Dreams, the movie. If you build it, they will come. And they built the school and we came. And this is the best school I could ever imagine going to. Community pharmacies are often the place people go seeking medical consultations. Patients expect their pharmacies to meet the highest quality and safety standards. But how are those standards measured, recognized, and certified? Community Health Accreditation Program, CHAP, is not-for-profit agency that's been accrediting healthcare professionals since 1965. CHAP is located in the heart of Washington, D.C., but whether your community is based on Wall Street or Main Street, CHAP believes it has the experience, knowledge, and know-how to help you successfully achieve national accreditation. All we do is community-based programs. We're not a facility accreditor. We have standards that are relevant for those organizations that are providing services in the community to the community. And when they meet those standards, they can present themselves as, as having a higher seal of approval. If a retail pharmacy wants to take that next step and say, we have the quality and the quality management tools to provide these services. CHAP is there. In California, if you're CHAP accredited, uh, we have been approved as an approved accrediting body for um, sterile compounding in that state. Same thing in Maryland for uh, pharmacy organizations who are CHAP accredited, they're exempt from the licensure requirements for distribution of medical gases. So it saves time and money. Payers will recognize those pharmacies 
that provide services and have been accredited for those services. They'll be willing to pay for those services. CHAP says its community-based pharmacy accreditation program utilizes 21st century training techniques, including remote learning programs, to educate pharmacists in how to meet accreditation standards and to provide better patient-centered care. The CHAP website is incredibly easy to use. An organization can easily go on the CHAP website, learn what they're going to need to do to prepare for accreditation, make an application to CHAP, and then uh, complete their self-study in the CARE system. The CARE self-study is in a web-based electronic format. It's something that you can access at any time, day or night. We have online webinars, telephone resources with our regional directors of professional services. It does take some preparation on the part of the organization and some time on the part of the organization in getting ready to meet the CHAP standards and for the on-site visit. CHAP site visitors for pharmacy um, all have fi at least five years middle to senior level management uh, in pharmacy services. Uh, they all t maintain a current license in their home state and they're all pharmacists. So only a pharmacist will come out and survey a pharmacy for CHAP accreditation. We have standards that apply to every setting, a retail pharmacy, a long-term care pharmacy, specialty pharmacies, as well as home infusion pharmacies. CHAP has deeming authority from CMS and what that means is that we can do Medicare surveys for the three services, home health, hospice, home medical equipment. And an organization can come to CHAP and get their Medicare certification for those areas. CHAP says its 5,000 accredited agencies want staff to stay current on the latest trends, rules and education in health care. We do news alerts, we have a newsletter that goes out, and we also reach out uh, individually to our customers if something's happening in their state that they need to know about. We also partner with state uh, and national associations like APHA uh, to make sure that we're up to date with what's happening in the industry, and then we can pass that information along to our accredited organizations as well. We've been around since 1965. Our standards are relevant, our process is user-friendly, and the organizations believe and know that what we're doing adds value to their, their organization. More than 100 years old, Creighton University's School of Pharmacy and Health Professions goes the distance, literally. One of the most significant milestones was the establishment of the nation's first distance-based entry-level pathway to the Doctor of Pharmacy degree. Located in Omaha, Nebraska, Creighton University is one of 28 Jesuit colleges and universities in the U.S. They emphasize the education of the whole person, academically, socially, and spiritually. Our students are looking for a balance in their life as well, so that plays a large role in how they look at a career. With nine schools and colleges, including an academic medical center and 7,600 students enrolled in undergraduate, graduate, and professional schools, Creighton University is a complex university for its size. And while the School of Pharmacy and Health Professions has enjoyed many successes, the Distance Pathway program that allows students to obtain their Doctor of Pharmacy degrees remotely is a tremendous stride in harnessing technology to allow individuals to serve their community wherever it may be. We've incorporated technology into learning in a number of ways. Uh, obviously, our, our unique distance education pathway in pharmacy uh, is a major example of that. All of our rooms that we use for our required courses have special technology for our distance pathway. Uh, they have cameras mounted in the ceiling or on the back of the wall. And there's two cameras, and one uh, captures anything that is shown through the document camera. And the other captures the instructor, and that's on a motion sensor and follows them around the front part of the room. Then the instructor also wears a digital microphone and our technology combines all of that together automatically uh, for the distance student to see uh, within an hour or two of the actual campus lecture. One of the neatest parts is there's a scroll bar on the side so they can, if they miss something, they can back it up, listen to it again, or if they can move forward and they can listen and watch that capture as many times as they want throughout the semester. I told my dad once that I wanted to be a pharmacist. And, but he knew that I was married and I was, I was an army wife. So I couldn't have the benefit of being a campus student because I would be relocating. So my dad um, actually emailed me uh, an excerpt from Creighton University and he told me to check this out. 
So I checked it out and it was a distance-based program for pharmacy students. We have been able to uh, address the, the shortage area of pharmacy practitioners, uh, not only in our region but in the United States. Because our distance program is, is widespread across the United States, we are now able to provide pharmacy practitioners in many areas of the United States that we weren't earlier on. You know, I remember very distinctly some people in my class that very first year, uh, the first year of the first program, who would not have had an option. People who had small kids at home, and even if they could have gone out and attended a program, there wasn't one close to them. So I am someone that there really were options, um, the, but however, the choices were not nearly as great as attending a program like Crichton, doing it electronically from my house. And again, being there for my family was very, very important to me. The quality of the education, the amount of interaction I have with professors as well as other uh, students is just as much as, as great as it would be in a campus-based uh, pathway. Um, the spring of the year that I was to start pharmacy school, my family situation changed and um, I could not move to Omaha to attend uh, campus at Creighton. Um, so that spring, I submitted a request to um, the School of Pharmacy at Creighton requesting to be transferred into the web-based uh, pathway of the program. And I was very fortunate that Creighton had the flexibility to offer that to me. A professional career is, uh, is intensive, it's challenging, so our job is to provide those tools and skills to our students so they can be successful. Strengthening pharmacists' existing skill sets and innovating new training techniques are just a few of the many ways APHA says it's helping members and improving patient care and medical outcomes. APHA is always looking forward and continually developing new trend-setting models to create more successful practices for today's pharmacists. The professional affairs team is really charged with making APHA's strategic plan a reality in practice. What we're really working on right now is the implementation of pharmacist clinical services under financially viable business models. So that includes uh, ramping up medication therapy management across the country and making sure that payment systems are in place for, for those services, health and wellness services for patients, uh, chronic disease management services, making sure that pharmacists can contribute to quality measures in practice in all settings including the community setting, hospital settings. The other area that we're really working on is in the area of medication safety and medication errors. According to the Institute for Safe Medication Practices, each year there are more than 1.5 million preventable adverse medication events in the U.S. Those preventable medication events result in $177 billion in preventable ambulatory care costs. Who better than the person that knows the most about medications to take the ball and then manage that in conjunction with the other members of the healthcare team? For many years, medication therapy management has been the number one strategic priority of the association. We have worked on numerous tools and resources to help provide practicing pharmacists with the tools and resources that they need in order to provide medication therapy management. We work with schools and colleges of pharmacy, prepare future pharmacists, we've developed a number of different types of practice models and service models um, that have helped to lead the profession um, in conjunction with other organizations and in collaboration with other, other groups to ingrain the MTM service model in, into practice. Another growing area of practice for pharmacists is educating patients on the successful management of self-care therapies. Well, APHA is, has really a, a long history in the OTC non-prescription self-care market. We are certainly the preeminent publishers of the Handbook of Non-Prescription Drugs, but we also do a lot of programming for pharmacists after they get out of school related to making sure that they understand how to, um, to talk to patients about self-care issues, how they triage self-care issues in, in their practice settings. APHA is continually creating new training tools to enhance the pharmacist's role in patient-centered care. APHA is collaborating with NABP, 
to develop the new Community Pharmacy Accreditation Program. And it will allow community pharmacies the opportunity by pursuing accreditation to distinguish themselves in the areas of quality, uh, patient care, medication safety. Another leading APHA initiative is training pharmacists in providing immunizations. We have now trained more than 175,000 pharmacists to administer immunizations. All 50 states plus Puerto Rico and the District of Columbia allow pharmacists to administer influenza vaccinations. And we've made a, a significant impact in the access for our citizens where pharmacists have now integrated immunizations into their patient care activities. Take one Park College of Pharmacy, combined with academic excellence, add a passion for serving others, mix in disease prevention and research, and you get Drake University's formula for creating tomorrow's leading health care providers. Drake University's College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences in Des Moines, Iowa, offers one of the country's outstanding PharmD programs. Well, it's exciting to see all of the innovations that we as a college have put into place. The hands-on experiential training students receive in the school's state-of-the-art labs, classrooms, and in real healthcare centers combined with the faculty's team-based approach to learning is creating tomorrow's healthcare leaders. Do you have some time here today to do a blood glucose screening? Drake graduates are being highly sought after for careers in every aspect of pharmaceutical sciences. I've worked in, in three or four labs and all of that experience will definitely be uh, look great on a resume. Drake's College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences has the feel of a large university in the setting of a smaller, more personal college. When you look at large universities and you look at how many opportunities they give, both in education and research, you can get all of that at Drake. The one thing that you get here that you don't get in large institutions is a sense of a community. With the pre-pharmacy program, we're very integrated into the rest of campus. Um, you can kind of get that part of the undergraduate experience. I teach pharmacy skills and applications class, which is the hands-on technical part of being a pharmacist. It's here that students learn how to use medications in a safe and effective okay. manner. We have 21st century state-of-the-art equipment in all of our labs and we continue to update them. In the Davidson lab, we use an automated dispensing machine. We also have the Mayhew compounding lab. The equipment that is in the Ellis Disease Prevention Lab allows our students to have a better understanding of the human body. This allows them to understand the effects that these conditions, injuries and illnesses can have on patients. In keeping with the university's mission of providing uh, exceptional environment for our students to learn. Uh, we have designed the pharmacogenomics and health sciences disease prevention lab uh, to provide students with a hands-on learning opportunity. There's two cancer cell lines. We're looking at the methylation pattern in, in those cell lines because uh, the more we know about uh, even the small details about these cancer cell lines, the better uh, we are able to uh, treat them. We have a number of students that go on and do concentrations in specialty areas such as leadership and entrepreneurship, global and comparative public health, and diabetes. We have a lot of students that pursue combined degree programs. We have a master's in business administration, a master's in public administration, and also a law degree. Many Drake Pharmacy students serve health care needs in every corner of the world, including at this clinic in Belize. They're at free clinics working side by side with doctors and nurses. They're um, reaching out to our seniors. And really eye-opening, really um, has changed my view of pharmacy. They also provide a number of health fairs. When students come back from these experiences, they can't wait to tell us what a wonderful transformative experience that they have had. What I desire of all graduates, that the skills and knowledge that we give them, the abilities to learn and grow, allow them to take advantage of opportunities that come their way, to take advantage of jobs that haven't even been created yet, and to actually create their own jobs, and so that all of those opportunities will ultimately lead to a healthier, happier world that they work in and live in. 
Pharmacists are well connected. A recent survey by the American Pharmacists Association found that pharmacists are well represented on social networks like Facebook and Twitter, a move that connects them to their real world communities, patients, and colleagues. Facebook is the most popular social network for pharmacists, with 62% of surveyed practitioners using it. LinkedIn was number two at 30%. YouTube was number three with 12% of those surveyed using the service. Twitter came in at number four with 8% of overall usage. In the small town of Big Rapids, Michigan, the College of Pharmacy at Ferris State University is achieving great things. With a curriculum centered on combining all sciences and a special focus in healthcare finance and management, the college sends its MBA graduates to the Great Lakes area and beyond. One of the attractive things about being a Ferris graduate is you're learning from practitioners. The faculty are all practitioners by and large and involved in the state and in practice. The ability to look forward in practice too, that as practitioners they, they see where it's headed. At Ferris State University, students learn that becoming an excellent pharmacist means being interdisciplinary and using what they've learned to break communication barriers with their patients. Each patient is, is different. Each patient is individual and in the clinical communications class and really in OTCs, the over-the-counters class, uh, we spend a lot of time helping students to, to build strategies, to come up with ways to systematically gather the information that they need. Helping them to adjust the approach of, of their care uh, often results in, in better outcomes. Becoming an effective pharmacist means knowing what real practice is like. APPE allows students to perform rotations in several institutions around the state. As part of the experiential programs, we work with our first year students and each student does a three week experience in a community pharmacy or traditional retail pharmacy setting. And what we really do is to give them the, the basics. What does a pharmacist do? What does it mean to work in a pharmacy? One of um, Ferris's strongest attributes, I think, is his partnerships within the community. Um, so for example, Ferris has partnered with uh, Meyer Pharmacy, which is a regional chain of community pharmacies of about 200 stores. Um, and through that partnership, they've offered residency training in community pharmacy practice for over 10 years now. Uh, so that's been a great collaboration. There's been some recent collaborations within the community that have led to the development of residency programs as well. Um, and not only with resident training, uh, we also place students at many of these locations throughout these collaborations we've had in, uh, within community pharmacy settings. Students have an opportunity to experience pharmacy practice in a variety of healthcare systems, working in clinics that provide training in medication compliance and management. Of all, I do get a chance to talk to the patients directly, mm -hmm. and a lot of time they do tell us um, a lot of information that they sometimes forget or don't tell the doctors or the residents who sometimes don't have all the time um, to kind of listen to what's going on with their lives. Typical day because I'm here at Cherry Street. Um, I get here in the morning and I go through some patient files that are one of the more pertinent ones to the day and review them and if I'm lucky I get to you know meet with them for even a half an hour sometimes to see what's going on with them. You get to really talk to the person on like a personal level. It's it's really, really rewarding because you don't get this anywhere else. This is my favorite rotation that's been so far, hands down. Located in the Old City, Philadelphia, the Institute for Continuing Healthcare Education is an independent medical education company that uses its expertise to design effective, focused education in multiple therapeutic areas that positively impact both patients and community health. The Institute provides innovative and clinically relevant certified continuing education to physicians, nursing professionals, pharmacists, and other allied healthcare professionals. At the Institute for Continuing Healthcare Education, they say that healthcare is not delivered in silos, and so neither should professional education. The best care possible happens in a team based environment where the uh, physician acts as the primary point of contact, but he collaborates with an interdisciplinary team of professionals. And as a team, the care is developed for the patient. 
we take that type of approach when we develop education. I think the Institute is unique in terms of uh, developing innovative education. Uh, we are trying to think out of the box. We are trying to do things that will inspire uh, healthcare professionals to, to be better at their trade. Continuing education activity planning begins with the identification of educational needs for the targeted audience. The education cycle starts by identifying educational gaps in the practice setting. And an educational gap is defined as what ideally should be happening in practice and what actually is happening in practice and the discrepancy that may exist between that. Throughout the year, we'll put together a variety of different programs, be they live programs, be they online programs, be they print programs, um, that meet specific educational gaps that we have identified um, during our research process. It's not going to be quantitative, it will be qualitative. When we are developing our programs, um, one of the things that we always try to do is build in ways so that the audience can interact with the actual education itself. It's continuing education that keeps the learner in mind that you know, we're not, you know, in academia because we want to read, read, and read more. We want to be able to interact. We want to see things in an exciting and very, you know, visual way. And also to take into account that patient care is what we're focused on. I think the evolving role of the pharmacist as the healthcare team um, is evolving, I think is really pushed more into the forefront that they want pharmacists involvement on daily patient care rounds, they want them talking to the patients on a daily basis and because of this the patients are going to ask questions directly to the pharmacist in addition to the other health care providers. So it's really important that the pharmacists are well educated. Several theories of adult learning suggest that it takes three to five educational and interactive interventions over time to initiate and sustain a change in knowledge or behavior. Changes in behavior are sustained with multiple interventions. Uh, First, the education has to be valuable and engaging, um, but one intervention is not enough. It may start off as a, a live event that we will follow up with practice pearls or, or um, reinforce some of the education. In many cases, what we will do is take that outcome data and distribute it to the learners um, because it's very valuable what their peers experienced with this particular intervention as well as how, how they compare to everyone else. The data is used in many different ways. First and foremost, we look at the data to see how are learners acting differently. Is it that their uh, knowledge has been enhanced? Has their application been enhanced? Or has their performance been enhanced? It's important that educational learning objectives are measurable because we are looking to impact or to change a clinician practice in terms of their knowledge, competence, or performance in the practice setting. Designing a measurable learning objective enables us to do that. The data also helps us to measure change in patient outcomes. And that's, that's equally as important. So it's a win-win situation. It's a win for the learners in terms of en enhancing their overall knowledge and their medical ability, as well as improving patient outcomes and quality of life. By design, pharmacy schools focus on drug formulation and delivery of medicine, while medical schools focus on biology and disease states. But Mercer School of Pharmacy integrates the two by recruiting scientists who also focus on biology and disease state to enhance students' ability to take research from lab to patient. With a legacy that dates back more than a century, the College of Pharmacy at Mercer has adapted to the rapid advances in medicine. One of the unique things about our research efforts here is that ultimately it is patient focused. The college became the first pharmacy school in the Southeast and is the fifth in the nation to offer the Doctor of Pharmacy as its sole professional degree. In addition, students have access to basic science and clinical research to study drugs for cancer and Alzheimer's. The main research interest in my lab is to devise nanocarriers to deliver multiple anti-cancer drugs to the tumor. And we aim to uh, identify highly effective nano-sized drug delivery system to, uh, to deliver the drug and enhance the anti-cancer efficacy of these drugs. And to achieve this goal, we actually take a multidisciplinary uh, approach. 
um, by combining pharmaceutical sciences with cancer biology. And we think uh, this approach is quite unique. Over the last year, I've had the opportunity to work with Dr. Tan and her cancer research lab. And my pr particular project was in terms of uh, looking at the time and concentration of two anti-cancer agents and um, how they affected the cell cycle with ovarian cancer cells. Um, it was really outstanding. Uh, my favorite part, I think, early on I noticed was when you looked at cell cycles and you actually saw cancer stop, you saw the cell pro proliferation stop, and that was just phenomenal to me that we could have such an impact on it. My goal is to get them experience on the clinical research side of things in that um, I would like them to experience uh, the patients that come into the clinical research, how the clinical research works, and how the development, uh, the drug development process goes for uh, all of the, the, the medications that they may eventually be uh, providing for their patients. The role of the pharmacist is not only that of distribution, but of service. Career opportunities are many and varied. Having this center here at Mercer really provides quite a special and unique experience for students because it's, it's not every day, and there's, there's I think less than five uh, pharmacy schools across the country that actually have one of these centers available. So it gives students a different perspective and allows students to see a, a pharmacist in a different role versus where you usually see them. It, ch it changes their, um, their, their thinking towards maybe their career path and what they want to do in their career in that they have never experienced the, the kind of clinical research that goes on here or what really gets into the clinical research process and all of the, the, the intricacies that, that take place and that their skill set will um, suit very well for this kind of a, a career. Pharmacy in the end is a science-based uh, discipline and understand the real science and how science is done really help them to understand what they learn from the textbook and ultimately understand how drug works and in the end that, that research experience helped them to be a better pharmacist. All of the research that we do ultimately have applications for the patients. And we know that when we're doing the research, rather than discovering something and then trying to determine whether it has a clinical application. Mancheck Technologies entered the pharmacy automation market five years ago with a revolutionary technology, the Dosis L60. The compact robotic system allows pharmacies and patients to fill, seal, and label 30 or 31 day single medication blister cards with the press of a button. Mantech Technologies is a product development company specialized in pharmacy automation. Based in Alexandria, Louisiana, Mancheck Technologies helps pharmacies keep up with prescription demands maintain regulatory compliance, and ensure patient safety all at the push of a button. Our machine is very flexible so it allows pharmacies to adapt to changing regulations, especially the short cycle mandated that are coming up uh, in January 1st, 2013. Our device allows them to fill both seven day cards and 30 day cards in the same equipment uh, and allow them to do that side by side with their technicians on the floor without really having to change much in their workflow. Everything kind of happens automatically if they set those rules up in our equipment. Their hallmark product, the Dosis L60, is an easy to use, pharmacy friendly product that fills, seals, and labels prescriptions. A, a typical long term care pharmacy like the one behind us that uses a Dosis L60 machine enjoys the benefits of the efficiency and automated workflow that that machine provides them as they serve the needs for the, one, the nursing home next to us, a typical nursing home that needs thousands of prescriptions filled every month. Well, we started in March of 09 with the beta side on it, upgraded it in November into uh, the full model and uh, a year later moved it over here in our new building, got another new one and worked fine ever since. We couldn't do without it. The L60 is about the same size and shape as a vending machine, making it easy to install. Our machine rolls in, uh, physical installation is, is less than half a day. Uh, they're able to integrate it into their workflow in a matter of a few weeks and have it start producing at full capacity very quickly. We build up the dose cell 60 in modules. It gives ability for us to go into your pharmacy, change a module out, come back, fix it here on the desktop, and that way you're not being interrupted. Minimum downtime for you as the pharmacist. 
I had looked at some automation and uh, the size of them usually turned me away. DOSIS helps pharmacy staff be more efficient while minimizing prescription errors. Um, well, it cuts the work in half. Instead of everybody standing on the counter filling, the machine takes care of half of the stuff for us. One person deals with this and can fill at the same time it's doing it, and it makes us go faster. And then we can prepack on it all night long, which cuts another workload in half, because on Monday that's what the majority we use is prepacks. So, I mean, it just cuts our work in half, and it's a lot easier to use than what I've used in the past. The best I expect the machine is at 6.30 at night when my last tech leaves and my beeper farmers is usually going out the door. We have doses loaded up and we come in the next morning, we've got 250 cards pre-packed ready for the next day. Oh, the machine costs roughly about the same as one technician and it, it does the work easily of two technicians. So most pharmacies are seeing a return on investment very quickly, um, typically less than 24 months, some as short as 12 to 15 months, depending upon how many hours of operation they have and how they, their workflow allows them to staff that pharmacy. So the bottom line is it costs the, uh, the amount of one technician and does the work of at least two. This is a great technology platform, allows a lot of flexibility, especially for generic change outs, generic swap outs of the medications themselves. Um, the canisters don't have to be exchanged. It's a universal uh, counting technology and allows a lot of a, a lot of continuing savings um, once the initial investment is made in this in this counting device for the pharmacies. Blending the old with the new, tradition with innovation, can be a tricky business, but the Notre Dame of Maryland University believes it has found the perfect combination of tradition and transformation. Since 1895, Notre Dame of Maryland University has been an innovator in education. The School Sisters of Notre Dame founded Notre Dame of Maryland to educate women underserved by society. Today, the school continues the mission set out more than a century ago, educating women and men to change the world. The vision of the School of Pharmacy is to provide an exceptional pharmacy education by creating a model learning community that's dedicated to the transformation of societal health. It's really the only the University School of Pharmacy's classrooms and labs are in the state-of-the-art G. Avery Bunting Hall. One of the perks of going to a new school is that everything is brand new. So everything was just built for us. Um, we have brand new labs, brand new lecture halls. Everything's pretty much online, so you can access everything from in the classroom on your laptops. So that's all exciting that we're getting a part to be the first ones to kind of break that stuff in. But a great deal of what the students learn takes place off campus. The Advocaring program assigns students to work in local community outreach programs. It's here that they help those underserved by society. They talk with those individuals, they understand who they are, how they've come to be related with this particular agency, understand in more detail what are their needs and how they as students can actually make an impact, a positive impact. Students have done everything from help us serve a daily meal where we serve 700 people. They've done educational programs, uh, health fairs, blood pressure screenings. And during one of the blood pressure screening, one of my classmates actually measured a fellow to be really high. He was actually admitted for a hypertensive emergency overnight. So actually this blood pressure screening actually educated the people, the clients, about how important it is to get their blood pressure screened. So it's been a very positive partnership. And one of the goals is at the end of our four years that the incoming class picks up where we left off. So we always will have a connection with those organizations and we can keep benefiting them. In the third professional year, students, as part of their introductory pharmacy practice experiences, take a course called Longitudinal Care. And it's in that course that students are paired with a patient in the community and they follow that patient and visit with that patient on a regular basis every week or every other week for an entire year. At first I was nervous in terms of am I able to know um, to apply what I learned in class to this patient but every uh, week I meet with the patient and I learn more about her I build a strong relationship with her 
and to help her learn more about her disease states and help her to be more adherent to her medications. I actually get to know her on a personal basis, so she gets to know, um, learn more about me and I learn more about her. In the long term, the goal is that the students having seen what an impact they can make in their community while a student, that they'll carry that with them throughout their entire career. And no matter what position they take or positions throughout their career, they always remember what an impact they can have on their community and that those needs are there and they incorporate that into their life. It's about developing them into professionals that will be compassionate, that will be empathetic, that will understand the issues that arise as a result of the very diverse patient population that we have in the U.S. today. Being a member of the APHA is a key way to ensure your voice is heard in the industry and with regulators. But belonging has a lot of other advantages too, ranging from professional education to connecting with peers. Here are some ways you can get involved. It's easy to become involved with APHA if you visit the APHA website. Volunteer activities can include becoming a key advocacy contact for the Government Affairs Department, signing up for a special interest group, or volunteering for an advisory role or committee. APHA also has a number of newsletters and listservs and e-communities available to help you with networking. Speak up. We want to hear from you what, what you're experiencing. There's the special interest groups, uh, which you can join a, a group of people that have a very similar interest that you have. We know what you're experiencing. We know what you're being challenged with. We could address the issues, develop tools that will help you be successful in your practice. Just look for a place that fits your needs and also allows you to serve the profession.